This is the brand new kicker bike shift from Wahoo, which is hitting the market at a more budget friendly price point. Right off the bat, you will see that the kicker shift shares many of the same features and functionalities as its older sibling, the kicker bike too. But it comes with a few noticeable changes. First, it ditches the climb functionality seen on the flagship kicker bike that physically adjusts the angle of the bike to simulate the gradients of the terrain. This kicker bike shift does not do that. Another notable change is in the flywheel department with a different design this time around. I also have to point out it lacks wheels for easy maneuvering, so just be ready to flex those muscles if you plan to move this 100 pound beast around your place. These I would say the primary distinctions between the two models. But when it comes to pricing, the kicker shift retails at 3000 US dollars, slashing a good $1000 off the price you would pay for the original Waho kicker. So it is a solid contender for those looking to stay in the Waho ecosystem and save a bit of money. Wahoo also redesigned the out-of-box setup experience to make it simpler for users to set up and get going uh, with the bike. You will find a QR code on the packaging that you can scan with your phone and it will direct you to a video with instructions on how to set up your new kicker. The instructions are well done and will walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how to set up the bike. Pretty cool. And I am glad Wahoo added this uh, to simplify and guide you through the setup process. And speaking of the setup process, setting up the bike itself was very easy. All you need to do is fix the legs with the included screws, pop in the seat post and attach the handlebar. It will take you like five minutes to put it all together. Once all that is done, fire up the Wahoo app and it will walk you through the bike measurement process to get it fitted properly and match your outdoor bike geometry using different fitting options they have available in the app. Whether it's adjusting the height, getting your inseam just right, or tweaking the stack, it is all quick and easy using these easy to use levers that Wahoo redesigned from the original bike. The bike comes with uh, what they call a bear claw crank arms uh, with five different crank length options ranging from 165 millimeter all the way to 175 millimeter. The bike is equipped with virtual shifting and custom gears that allows you to match the gear ratios of your outdoor bike, including number of speeds and even cassette tooth count. It replicates most major manufacturer group sets from Shimano, SRAM, and Campagnolo. You can customize the braking and create different bike profiles. So I think Wahoo has done a nice job making the setup process very easy and not as intimidating as it used to be. Now, let's talk about that flywheel. It's here that Wahoo decided to switch things up a bit. Instead of sticking with the traditional flywheel found on the kicker bike or even traditional flywheel found on the kicker direct drive trainer, they opted to use a lighter, more compact electromagnetic version that's neatly tucked away inside and sealed off. The first thing you will notice is how quiet this bike is. It is whisper quiet. Also, according to Waho, this new flywheel promises lighting fast responses to changes in gradient and power levels. And in my experience, I found it to respond quickly to gradient shifts during sim mode uh, rides and does not miss a beat with intervals adjusting in erg mode. On the other hand, unlike the kicker bike, the flywheel isn't motorized, so there is no downhill simulation. And in Zwift, it doesn't really matter that much uh, because you can stop pedaling and your avatar will continue to coast down descents. Also, you will notice a lack of inertia and you might find the ride feel a tad less realistic compared to what you would experience on the kicker bike or kicker direct drive trainers. Also, there is no display that shows you which gear you are on or any other information. Wahoo intends for you to use their app for all that jazz and you'll find the gear information on the Wahoo RGT and system apps and they are collaborating with Zwift to include this feature too. Plus Wahoo sends this information via Bluetooth so it is available for any app to display. So it is up to the app to read and display this information for you. There are no USB ports to use for charging devices. Not a deal breaker for me as I really never use those on the kicker bike. But that is pretty much everything new or different with the kicker bike shift. And outside of that, everything else is pretty much the same as a flagship kicker bike. And speaking of deal breakers, it measures up to 2200 watts instead of 2500 watts that you get with the kicker bike. So. 300 watts less, and that is a deal breaker for me. Just kidding, 
and joking aside, per specs, the bike measures power with the same plus minus 1% accuracy and automatic calibration, so no need to run any calibration for accurate power measurement. It also provides the same 20% maximum gradient simulation. As for the handlebar setup, it is pretty much unchanged. You've got your steering buttons on the inside of the handlebars and customized uh, top buttons that syncs with various apps. And uh, here's a little uh, Zwift hot tip for you. Using the top button on the handlebar will activate the power up and the bottom one to do a quick turnaround. Neat, right? As far as connectivity, this shifter cable is what basically powers up the bike. It is magnetic and will snap in place. Once connected, it will fire up all the connectivity options the bike offers, ANT plus connection, three Bluetooth channels so you can connect it to multiple apps simultaneously, and Wi-Fi connectivity for a much more stable connection with apps that supports direct connect. Also, firmware updates happen behind the scene overnight as long as you keep your bike plugged into power so no need to worry about updating firmwares and tucked under the bike there is also a direct connect port that you will find right below the power dongle if you prefer to use a hardware connection and this requires purchasing the direct connect dongle from wahoo now the shifter cable is magnetic and as we know with a little force magnets are prone to be disconnected I have accidentally knocked off the shifter cable with my towel a couple of times and when you do that, you'll quickly find out because you will basically lose connection. Also, race mode is not on this bike yet, but Wahoo is planning on adding a race mode to this bike and the uh, kicker bike too as well. Let's chat about power accuracy for a moment. I had the opportunity to use a new kicker bike shift for a number of rides over the past few weeks and compare the results against two different power meters on separate rides. Here is a pace ride I did in Zwift. The first half of the ride, the power numbers were almost spot on. Going into short hard efforts, both were very close and moving in line together. The second half, the power was off by about 5.7%. And that's hard to tell which one was off here since there is no way for me to validate or add a third power meter to validate the data. But looking at the right lift power measurement from my Garmin Rally, it looks like something was off with the Garmin that caused this deviation. But moving on to another sim ride. This one was against Asioma Duo power meters. Overall, the data looked very close. The kicker shift was measuring about two to 2.5% higher than Asioma. And uh, transition into erg mode, this is my erg mode test workout that I usually do to test trainers out. Just to note, I did dial down the intensity by about 5% and that's why you see this yellow power line below the blue line. From an accuracy standpoint, it was good. This workout was done against my Asioma Duo. Again, they were very close. Looking at the 20 second section here, they were almost spot on and maintained a close range with 1 to 1.8% 1 during the longer intervals. But how about erg mode? The bike performed flawlessly. The transitioning between the 20 second intervals was seamless, hitting the target within just two to three seconds. And it didn't stumble during the low cadence section, a part that usually trips up many trainers. It nailed the target watts with only minor deviations. Not sure what was going on with cadence dropouts here during the low cadence sections. My suspicions is that it was more of a trainer road issue at the time as I do a recorded this workout on Zwift and the data on, on, uh, on trainer road and Zwift did not reflect the same discrepancies I noticed on trainer road. Even during the longer intervals, whether in small gear or hitting the big chain ring and middle cog, Eric Mod held his crown staying within a watt of my goal. And that last interval, shifting to the largest gear, again, no hitches, just a minor one to two watt deviation from the target. So overall, it worked very well during those rides and Eric Mod was smooth as silk, zero complaints from this end. So just like many companies out there, Wahoo is expanding its offering to appeal to a broader spectrum of cyclists, ranging from casual riders to seasoned pros or those age groupers who crave top tier specs. Basically what we are seeing here is a distinct separation into let's just call it a pro and non-pro lineup. In the pro corner we have the kicker bike 2 that was announced last year and retails for $4,000 
and the new kicker move that was announced today and retails for $1,600. This includes premium features and functionalities that are tailored to riders who are looking for a bit more oomph in their rides and more immersive riding experience. On the other hand, the non-pro version where the kicker bike shift stands and now the kicker uh, 6 direct drive trainer stands are designed for the general consumer market, offering a balanced blend of features, quality, and affordability, which is ideal for the majority of athletes. So by having a tier product line like this, Wahoo can address the diverse needs and budgets of their vast customer base and making sure there is something for everyone from the casual riders, age groupers to professionals who are looking for the cream de la creme of bike trainers. So basically what I'm trying to say here, the kicker bike shift is a perfectly good smart bike for the general everyday riders who wants a really good indoor setup but does not need all the premium features and the immersive riding experience the flagship bike offers. I'll drop links to where you can get the kicker bike and bike shift down below and giving those links a click not only gets you some great gear but also supports the channel without costing you a penny more. With that, thanks for watching and uh, feel free to share this video with others in your life and do not forget to tap the like button and uh, if you are still watching but haven't subscribed yet, you know what to do. Thanks again and I'll catch you in the next video.